like to take a look now at another concept of relative prices. In this instance, it's going to be the relative price of inputs. In particular, the, la the relative price of labor in terms of capital, which I'll describe in just a moment, which is more frequently referred to as the wage rental ratio. So let's say that we've got the cost of labor as being, say, $20 for an hour of work. So this is the nominal wage. It's just like a nominal price that we saw in another video. $20 for every unit of, of labor that a firm employs. And let's say that a comparable expression can be derived for capital. That is the payment for a unit of capital is $10. This is the nominal cost of capital. The relative price of labor in terms of capital is a way of saying if I hire as a firm one more unit of labor, how much do I give up in terms of foregone use of capital? Now if you look at this ratio, or these two nominal prices, you can get some intuition before we look at the algebra. If it costs $20 to hire a unit of labor and $10 to hire a unit of capital, if I hire one more unit of labor, I give up the opportunity to purchase two units of capital. It's half as expensive. If I hire one unit of capital, it takes me $10, and I give up the opportunity to hire a half of unit of labor. We can also look at that as the wage rental ratio. That is the wage divided by the cost of capital. So we're just simply plugging these two numbers in. And with a bit of algebra, what you will find is that that wage rental ratio, the relative cost of labor in terms of capital in this example, is two units of capital for every labor, given these numbers. So when we talk about the wage rental ratio rising, for example, that's going to be when this price rises relative to that. So that could be because, say, the wage went up. Say if it went to $40 per worker, what you would have in this instance is that the wage rental ratio was four units of capital for every labor. If the price of capital went down to five units of capital, five dollars per, per unit, and it stayed at 20, we also would have four units of capital for every unit of labor. So the wage rental ratio can go up for various reasons, because the wage went up, it could be because the cost of capital went up, some combination, but the, the wage rose uh, more than the, uh, the cost of capital, or they both could fall. But in every instance, this relative price of labor, the wage rental ratio, is going to give you the trade-off for a firm that gets to choose how much capital it hires versus how much labor. This relative price of labor, the wage rental ratio, is a signal to firms to potentially alter how much of these two inputs they use. This is 
critically important in all sorts of contexts because a firm that has the choice on how to a combination of capital and labor can use will respond to these changing prices by altering the combination of labor and capital that it uses. But in every instance, at the heart of it, is the wage rental ratio. So it's very important to understand that concept. Very similar to the relative prices of the goods, but in this case, for inputs rather than final.